Hello, and thanks for coming. I'm Timur Yarosh. I'm a tech lead at Intelias. My team and I built payment processing engine for a large European bank. We built it using stateful functions. And we came through an interesting journey of learning what stateful functions is and if it fits our solution to how to use it properly. Also, you may be familiar with my articles about stateful functions on Medium. There are millions of ways to write a single application, and as engineers, we should be very picky about our decisions. We should choose what technology stack to use, what button to apply to our problem, identify what pros and cons some approaches have, and so on. Stateful functions makes life easier when dealing with state and messaging, but it also introduces new questions. For instance, how to design a function? Should we use embedded SDK or a remote one? Or how to design a namespace? or how to make requests to external services are important, or even how to query data, how to integrate stateful functions with your favorite framework. A lot of questions, right? Correct decisions can make the application incredibly easy to build and maintain, while incorrect ones can destroy everything. Though there are no ultimately good or bad decisions. It would be so simple to choose between <laughs> good and bad decisions if we know what's good, right? But there are just trade-offs, and it's your job to choose the best one for your individual case. During this talk, I'm going to share some principles and best practices that we found useful during our journey, and that you can use to take a correct decision. And Gringotts, the famous bank from the Harry Potter universe, will help me. Goblins do most operations in Gringotts manually. So even withdrawing some money from your bank account can take hours especially if you stay in a wait line. And you will, because manual operations and large distances within the bank generate long wait lines on a daily basis. Eventually, the Ministry of Magic and the sea level of Gringotts decided that it's time to change everything. Perhaps they watched some talks at Flink Forward, or just noticed how easy muggles transfer money using a smartphone but they decided to build own payment processing engine using the magic of muggles technology. And they decided to start from the proof of concept with a single operation, moving money between internal accounts. From this point, I have to introduce a bank terminology. Debtor is the one who sends money and the creditor is the one who receives. In other words, debtor is a sender and the creditor is a receiver. Move money operation consists of two steps. Withdrawing money from the debtor account and putting money to the creditor account. So, the first question is how to design our functions. To answer it, let's review the anatomy of stateful functions. The function has a unique ID, its own state and behavior. Does it remind you anything? Because it does for me. It reminds me, business entities that have own ID, private state and behavior that uses the state. Also, a single function has one more interesting feature, no concurrent modifications allowed. All messages sent to a single function will be processed in serial. So I would design functions as business entities. Let's review our operation. Withdraw money from the debtor account and put money to the creditor one. So we need an account function that carries its balance and can change it. Also, we need a transaction function that carries transaction properties such as debtor, creditor and amount and asks account function to withdraw or put some money. The next question is how to design namespaces. Common closure principle can help us. This principle is similar to the single responsibility, but for larger modules. It states that we should put in a single module things that changes together. For instance, would we change the account behavior if transaction steps changed? Probably not. Would we change the account behavior if a new operation, such as currency exchange, introduced? Probably not. There are still withdrawing money and putting money. So, I decided to split account and transaction function into separate namespaces. Another principle that we find useful is common reuse principle. 
It states that components that are used together belong to the same module. Imagine case where account function collaborates with an egress to stream its changes to the external software. Account function and the egress would belong to the same name, namespace, right? Okay. Stateful functions offers embedded and remote SDK. The question is, how to decide which is better for your particular case? Let's compare them one by one. Remote functions can be implemented with any framework. You can deploy them anywhere, even make them serverless to achieve elasticity easier. And you can even add new functions to the existing namespaces without downtime. The same is true for a regular upgrade. This is so cool. At the other hand, we have embedded functions. They are deployed directly into state fund runtime, so they are cheaper to invoke in comparison to the remote ones. Also, embedded module can be bundled together with the state fund runtime to make the distribution easier. Though, embedded functions are limited and dangerous. You can't integrate them with any framework you want. Moreover, a crash of a single function can crash the job. So the rule is the following. Use remote SDK unless you need embedded. Stateful functions inherits from Flink exactly one's state consistency and the ability to recover from checkpoints and save points. But in case of recovery, functions can repeat some requests and external applications has to provide idempotent APIs to reject duplicated ones. If the API is not idempotent, there are still a few workarounds. Stateful functions offers exactly one's delivery semantics for Kafka. When the function produces the message to the egress, the message is sent to Kafka in transaction. It's not visible to consumers until transaction is committed. It will be committed after the new checkpoint is generated. This is a reliable way to achieve exactly one's delivery semantics, but the delay between send and commit steps might be a critical issue for some applications. Another approach is to generate deterministic IDs for your requests and build a separate connector for non idempotent API that will ensure idempotency for verifying IDs and rejecting the duplicated ones. The drawback is obvious. Separate connector has to be built. This is a trade-off between delivery speed and development speed. Stateful functions are good at performing operations, but external applications can't easily query data from your functions. The solution is simple, or probably simple, it's CQRS. Split your application into command and query models. Common models are stateful functions that shares state updates into egress. So whenever the change comes into stateful function and the state changes, function can send a message to the egress. The application with query models can be implemented with any suited technology and will consume the messages, update query database and provide query API. So it's time to work hard. Let's write some code. Okay, let's review the modules I have prepared. The first one is the account remote module. It contains a namespace for account function. The second one is the state fun module. It contains a configuration of stateful functions. The last one is the transaction module. It contains a namespace for transaction function. Both namespaces are remote modules implemented as Spring Boot applications. Let's check out the account function first. It has a static type name. We will use it for sending messages to this function. Also, it has a value spec for balance. We will use the spec to request the current state from the context. The function implements apply method from the stateful function interface. This method is used to dispatch incoming messages to the methods that can handle them. For instance, if we receive a message of type init account, then we deserialize it to the proper object and pass it to the initialize account method. Initialize account method just persists the requested amount as a current balance. Another method apply transaction is created to change the balance of the account. To process the request, it extracts current balance from the storage, then it performs some operation on both current amount and the amount from the incoming message, and if the result is positive, 
it's stored as a new state and the transaction accepted message is sent to the transaction function. Otherwise, the state is left unchanged and the responding message is transaction declined. What's left behind the scenes here is how do we serialize and deserialize incoming messages. Let's check it. We use JSON and annotate detail models to work smoothly with the Jackson's object mapper. As you can see, the type contains type name of this command and two lambdas that serialize and deserialize the value. This is cool, but how, how to make account function a spring bin? Let's check it. Stateful functions SDK has a request reply handler. This is a handler that can process raw requests from the state fun cluster and dispatch them to the target functions. All you need is to do two things. The first one is to register functions and their state value specs in the handler. And the second one is to implement a good old Spring MVC controller to handle HTTP requests and pass them to request reply handler. Let's check the controller. Here it is. We just uh, receive raw bytes and pass them to the handler. The response from the handler will be returned from the controller. Okay, the transaction function is a bit more complex. Its job is to orchestrate transaction execution, but first of all, it should carry the state, debtor, creditor, and amount. Both debtor and creditor are of type string, and the amount is of type long. The transaction function has its own apply method for dispatching incoming messages. If the message of type execute transaction received, we want uh, to init transaction state and then withdraw the requested amount from debtor. Let's check init transaction method first. Here we just obtain amount, debtor and creditor from the execute transaction command and set them to the function state. Withdraw from debtor method is a bit more interesting. Here we create apply transaction message that contains negative amount to ensure the operation will be withdraw. And we send this message to the account function of debtor. As you remember, account function withdraws the requested amount and sends the transaction accepted message back to transaction function. Let's get back to transaction. When transaction accepted message from the account arrives, we have to identify the sender. Was it a debtor or a creditor? To identify it, we compare the caller, the function that sends the message with the previously stored debtor. If they are equal, then the caller is identified as debtor. Okay, if transaction accepted message received from debtor, we proceed to the next step, putting money to the creditor account. We extract the requested amount from the state and create one more apply transaction message for creditor. This time, amount is positive in order to add some money to the creditor account. After transaction accepted message received, we can complete the transaction. Let's review the state fund configuration now. The recommended way to deploy stateful functions runtime is to use official Docker image. So I have created here a new image based on the official one. This image has a module YAML file that configures our stateful functions. Module YAML is simple and straightforward. It consists of sections that describe how messages go through the state fun cluster. The first two sections are remote modules configuration. They define the namespaces of account and transaction functions and the paths where they are accessible. What's interesting here is the asterisk instead of function name. It means that all messages sent to specified namespace must be delivered to the specified path. And it does not matter what the function is, only namespace matters. It enables us to implement new functions within registered namespaces and invoke them without changing any configuration. This is really cool, huh? This is the advantage of remote modules that embedded functions can't beat. The last part of the module YAML file contains ingress configuration. Ingresses are sources of incoming messages sent from external application. For instance, 
You can send a message to Kafka, and this message somehow must be consumed by stateful functions application and delivered to the target function. Ingress has described exactly that. Here we specify two ingresses for two types of external messages, init account and execute transaction. You should remember them. Account function expects init account message to set the initial balance, and transaction function expects transaction, uh, execute transaction message command to start transaction execution. So for both ingresses, we describe the address of Kafka, consumer group ID, and the ID of the ingress. Remember common closure principle and common reuse principles? We put ingresses into namespaces of the related functions. Also, we specified here a topic for subscription, a type to deserialize messages to, and the target function, a function that will receive all messages from the given topic. So this is it. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them.